welcome back to my channel. My name is Veronica. Thank you so much for clicking the link to watch my video. Without further ado, let's get started with today's video. Okay, you guys, so apparently um, I haven't filmed a COT or OTS video of just telling you guys about my experience. So this is going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly about my OTS experience. And hopefully um, what you guys draw from this will help you succeed or know what a little bit to expect um, from my story. So let's start out with the beginning. Um, basically my recruiter, if you guys don't know, I'm in the United States Air Force um, as an officer. I'm a Medical Service Corps officer specifically, which basically means I'm a healthcare administrator in the medical uh, group unit, however you want to explain that. Um, so my recruiter wasn't the best recruiter. MSC recruiters are definitely hit and miss. Um, I definitely need to figure out how to get a copy of my scroll, but that was a random thought. Um, so essentially me going into the Air Force was not an easy task. It took me about a year and a half. If you guys ever want to see any of my military videos, I will link a playlist of my military videos so you guys can just binge them. OTS is Officer Training School. Um, medical, chaplain, lawyers, anything that's a little bit different, they go to what's called a uh, COT, which is Commission Officer Training. However, um, they're doing away with COT, I believe, this year. So COT will no longer exist and it will combine to form, I believe, TFOT. Essentially what all of those acronyms mean is all officers go to officer training school. It's like boot camp for officers. Um, you won't go to boot camp. You won't go to basic training. Um, this is your training. So officer training school is your training. All the differences are you're all grouped together by career fields and that's pretty much it. Some are longer, some are shorter, but like I said, now that they're combining them, um, they're all going to be the same length of time. The only difference between the regular OTS and the specialty OTS, um, such as COT or TFOT, is we are already officers as soon as we get to basic training, or as soon as we get to officer training. That means when I showed up to OTS back in 2016, I was already a second lieutenant, whereas um, my other friends who were in BOT and the regular OTS, um, they were not officers until they finished their officer training. It's kind of complicated, but what you need to know is we all go to officer training school. It's all located in Maxwell, or at Maxwell Air Force Base, which is located in Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, I believe. Um, but like I said, so first of all, my recruiter wasn't the best. I get a notification that I have to go to COT in like, I think 30 days or less. It was really short notice. Um, so to get all my stuff packed up and everything, I had to sign a power of attorney. So my mother actually handled all my PCS stuff because I was nowhere physically there. Um, so I headed down to um, OTS, although it's caught, I'm going to say OTS so you guys know the basic officer training school because I don't want people to get confused. So I'm just going to say OTS because it's literally almost all the same. All right, so I head down to officer training school in this small plane um, to Montgomery, Alabama. Um, my dad's family, grandmother, all live in Alabama, so I'm very familiar with that area because that is the area they kind of reside in around there. Um, so I'm very familiar with that area. Um, basically, when I get there, you know, you meet other people because once you connect to this one plane that goes directly into Montgomery, there literally everyone on the plane was headed to officer training school. We were excited, so that's the good part, you know, fresh things, excited of the experience. Then I get there, and they're basically like, put your bags down, yelling, blah, blah, blah. Um, so at basic, they yell way worse than this, but I think this was them trying to be like, hey, you guys are officers and you're not going to get a cakewalk. In the past, um, there was housekeeping where you didn't even have to do clean up your dorm or anything like that. Um, they did away with that a long time ago because they're like, hey, you guys are grown-ups and you need to learn how to be just like listed counterparts. So essentially, I arrive 
at the base. Um, they're yelling at me as I'm getting my suitcase out of the taxi. First of all, I underpacked, but it worked to my advantage, so that was the bad. <laughs> underpacked and found out that I had to do laundry twice as much as my counterparts. However, it was nice because when they did room inspections, I had literally almost close to nothing in my room, which was nice because I always passed my room inspection. Um, but definitely don't do like me. Bring full size everything. Don't bring travel size. I don't know why I thought, oh, this will last me four to five weeks. Yeah, right. Well, I'm literally getting out the car, like I said, they're kind of yelling like, move over here, yada, yada, yada. Um, these are the MTIs. They are all senior non-commissioned officers, which means they're enlisted because they're non-commissioned. Senior NCO um, is what they call them. So a master sergeant to chiefs, but usually they were all master sergeants. Um, they're yelling at us, get over here, blah, blah, blah. I was like, whatever, because I was over it. As soon as I got there and I heard the yelling, I was like, oh, no. Um, so I'm there, and then we pay a landing fee. I think the landing fee was like 60 bucks because you're paying for your water pack and your MRE. And, yes, you have to bring money when you go to OTS, um, especially if you don't have your uniforms. You're going to need at least two to $3,000. Um, now everything is going to be OCPs, which is the operational camouflage pattern. Anyways, Air Force is changing uniforms, so I will film a video on that once I actually get my uniforms. Um, but yeah, so basically you're going to buy your regular everyday uniforms, you're going to buy your service dress, um, and also your mess dress. So buying everything total, I think I spent like $3,000, but my dad gifted it to me as a congrats on getting selected as an officer gift. Um, so luckily, thank you, Dad. I didn't have to pay for that. Um, but don't forget to bring, I would say, bring a credit card or a debit card, depending on how much you have in your situation. You'll get your shoes and everything. So you'll do like a drag run. You'll get all your accoutrements and all of that. Um, so the first couple days is kind of like a lot of yelling, a lot of hurrying up and wait um, which means you're they rush you over here and then you sit there for 30 minutes. We kept doing that and it was really frustrating for me because I'm like, why are you yelling and making us rush if you're literally going to make us wait? And I don't know. That is just, it was very common when I went. Um, so the first thing you do when you first get there, I'm kind of jumping around. Sorry, let me go back. The first thing you do when you kind of get there is you stand around and you're in your jeans and t-shirt, whatever you uh, arrive in which do not wear anything that is um, trendy any ladies no booty shorts none of that your stuff needs to look like I wore jeans just to be safe in hindsight I'm like man I wish I had some shorts because they made us march and stand and learn commands as soon as we got there this is in the Alabama heat it is August um, I already was starting to change two shades darker which I know you guys are like what yeah I was dark um, and my mom had braided my hair so that was nice so I didn't have to worry about that. I ended up taking it out towards the end. Ugh, Veronica, why did you do that? I don't know. Um, so yeah, you're ending, whatever you arrive in, you're going to be prepared to march all day, learn commands out there in the sun, drenched in sweat. <laughs> you're not allowed to move, to talk or anything. It's just all these MTIs just yelling at you, whatever. Um, okay, they teach you how every every time they take every time they say drink or water or hydrate, any of those words, you have to drink. So they'll yell, 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 all of a sudden they'll be like, hydrate. And then you take your camel back or camel pack, I still have mine, but I hate it. I can't look at it, too many bad memories. And you have to sip it and then put it back and stand there with your camel pack on. You keep your camel pack on the entire time you're at OTS. I think the last week when your family comes, they're like, okay, we can't let your family see how we identify you guys. So, so I think when it started to go bad is when I was actually assigned to my flight. So, I'm excited because I don't have a roommate. My roommate dropped or canceled or whatever. So I have a huge room to myself. I loved it because I was like, oh my gosh, I hate roommates. Um, so I was so happy. And then my 
wingman who I ended up becoming really close with while we were there, she also had no roommates. It was awesome because there was about 30 people who ended up dropping or couldn't make it. And so a bunch of us had um, just solo rooms in a huge room. It was so nice. Um, so after that, I, what else did I do? Um, so after that, we were like assigned to flights and you didn't pick your flights. This was already pre-selected before you even got there. And this is where it started to get ugly slash bad. First of all, we had like what was called a flight commander who was an OTS candidate like myself who got to lead your flight. So I can't remember if we voted for this person or if he was the most senior or whatever. I think we voted for him slash he was prior enlisted, um, but I could not stand him. He was so rude to me, disrespectful. Um, he set me up multiple times to what's called storm so you know how there's like norming and storming well you got a storm to get to the norm and all this other stuff so basically look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about um so basically when you get to the storming after you like kind of argue with your classmates then you guys develop some type of level of respect for each other because you feel comfortable enough to call each other out and all this other stuff so um storming wise he basically set up a situation and kind of blamed it on me when I had nothing to do with it at all. And I remember getting called to my flight leader's cubicle, which is basically this, you know, a captain to a major who commands our flight. Um, so there's like the captain or major and then there's like the flight commander. So this guy got me in trouble enough to be called there and they're basically like, why are you doing X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, what? I didn't do any of that. And apparently it was all a huge setup to have me come back to the flight to kind of be like starting drama. So this person felt like that's what we needed to get to so that way our flight could bond better. When I tell you the level of like, I wanted to literally punch this person in the face. Like, I'm not violent, but I just thought, what an awful human being you are. Um, to this day, I do not talk to either of the flight leader or the flight commander because afterwards he's like, oh, we're all peers, because we're technically all CGOs. My flight leader was a captain, but um, he was not what I would say represents the Air Force at that time. My flight leader was going through some drama, um, it came out when he was teaching things, he decided to flirt with classmates and just be overall inappropriate. So he was not my friend at all. And then he was always asking me, always targeting me like I did something. And truly, you guys, to be honest, my OTS experience was not at all positive in the beginning, but it came out to be so positive at the end because I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I actually found people who you know, I like me and I realize, you know, that some, the Air Force sometimes can get a bad rap because you meet those random individuals who just suck and they're not cool. But, um, I think what else happened too was just, I mean, there's so many drills, you're marching all day, you're sweating, you're out in the sun. Um, what was really funny was our flight was called Lima Flight because they name you by the alphabet. And boy, did we just suck at a lot of things. I'm used to winning and being on winning teams, but this really humbled me. Um, marching, I think I was good at calling the cadence. So every now and then you get to rotate and call the cadence. Um, it's a risk though, because the MTIs yell at you and they're like, what are you doing? Um, and telling me to take off my hair tie. I have my hair tie on. Oh my gosh, this lady, she ripped me a new one. I cannot remember her last name, but she was like, what are you doing with that hair tie on? Should you have that hair tie on? Oh, Lieutenant Luke took the hair tie off. And I was like, all you have to do is say, hey, not on rags, take the hair tie off. But you know, it's kind of fun because I think the MTIs get a game out of it. They, they want to laugh, but they don't laugh. Like they scream at you literally for five minutes straight. And then I swear, they go back to their rooms and they just start busting up laughing. I swear. But anyways, um, the MTIs were actually my favorite part because it's so nice being around enlisted, strong senior NCOs who know what they're doing, who know how to motivate you, who know how to mentor you. And literally I got the most out of them. 
One time we marched, our flight marched into a bush. I mean, it was just a hot mess. And then we had to stay in the bush because <laughs> we got caught by the commandant for marching in the bush. And he's like, no, you guys are gonna stay there and stand there for two minutes until you learn how to do marching orders. Wasn't my fault, but we were all in a flight. So hey, one team, one dream. Um, another bad kind of thing is when you are at the DFAC, which is a cafeteria that you eat at, you have to eat in 10 minutes or less. I had hiccups, I kid you not, you can ask all of my OTS cot mates. I had hiccups every day because I had acid reflux from eating so fast. First of all, when you sit down, you sit in a modified attention. So it means you have to sit all the way up, your hands are placed in blades like this on your um, knees, and you sit there and then with one hand, you're eating. So you're just eating, 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 eating. We were always messing up marching into the defect. Because we always messed up marching into the defect, that ate into our time to eat. Whenever the last person got done eating, or was it the first person? I think it's the first person. Whenever the first person got done eating, um, you have to, it, it's, there's like a quick timer. So the table next to us, let's say the last person got done eating, all three of them get up we have to speed up at least five minutes because everything's at a cadence, like it's at a pace. So you can't just sit there and talk. And first of all, there was no talking during the defac, but you can't just sit there and eat and be like, oh, this is good. I mean, no. It was really fast and whenever that person from the previous table got up and all three or four of them got up, your table had to then pretty much get up. So literally, you had to take your time eating because when the first person gets done eating, then the second person at your table gets done eating, then the third person table at your table gets done eating, they can't sit there and wait for you. It's kind of like, you're done, you're done, you're done, you better be done. Up at, you have to stand up at the same time, exit a certain way, put your tray down a certain way. All of this stuff, you're like, this is stupid. Because in my head, I was thinking, this is stupid. What is this teaching me? But it really does teach you discipline, order, consistency, standardization, and just overall, can you, can you follow instruction? That is what all these mental tests are teaching you. More than anything at OTS versus um, basic training, there are so many mental games that they do because you're gonna be the leader, you have to be the strongest one. Um, so there's a lot of mental games that I kind of fell for and I was like, what the heck? And then I realized, oh, slowly as it started to get closer towards the end. Um, the food at the DFAC though was really good, but I was the most fit I've ever been. I mean, I was eating way more than I had ever ate in my life, but I was so lean. I had a full six pack because we worked out every day at 4.30 a.m. I mean, I was so fit. I missed that body so much. I was fitter than my cheer college days, which my cheer college days, I had a four pack. I was lean. Um, I was a lot heavier because I had more muscle than I do now. I <laughs> lost all my muscle, so I'm kind of a string bean right now. Um, but it was amazing how good I looked and how much I love waking up at 4.30 to like be with my teammates. I hated it because I was like barely sleeping at night because I was like, oh, I gotta get up and make sure I have my PT clothes on, my safety belt, all this stuff. But it was just so much fun to kind of like end the day with or start your day with working out and then go straight into classes. Bad was there's so many classes. First of all, your classes, I think, start at 8 or 9 a.m. because you'll eat breakfast and then you'll start your classes where they teach you all these different random courses that I'm not going to even get into. Those were hard. There was plenty of times where I fell asleep in them because number one, we're up doing projects all night. Number two, we're up at 4.30 a.m. starting fitness, so that means you need to get up at 4 a.m. Number three, you're just sitting in classes all day in this giant auditorium. It's freezing in there, so you think you'd be awake, but it's just like, who cares? I don't remember anything from the courses except for sitting in there, but yeah. Then we had to take tests, and I'm not gonna lie. I struggled in taking these tests. I'm a very smart girl, 3.5 GPA. Um, my last semester, I think I had a 4.1 in college. I'm very smart, but for some reason with these military tests, I could not pass the test. Like I passed, but it was like a C or a B and you had to get an A. 
it was ridiculous. So I think I would, what I would do is I would have test anxiety because I would take it and then I would change my answer. I would think about it and be like, well, it could also mean this. Military tests are just weird. Basically, when they ask you a question, they want the answer that they told you. They don't want you to think about an answer that it could also be. They want the answer that they told you. So finally, towards the end, I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop studying how I normally study, and I'm going to just study exactly what they gave me. Then, knock that test out with a 96. So I'm like, what the heck? So I struggled with that, and you can't fail tests, and they consider, I think, a B or C and below failing. So I definitely didn't pass a couple of tests, but it wasn't like I failed with an F. Like, I, they would say, okay, you have to get... 20 out of 20 or 20 out of 25 right and I would get 19 literally one off so it wasn't like I was failing or anything but that was kind of depressing as well because it made me second guess myself and I went through this whole mental phase I met the good though I met so many awesome people so many amazing memories that I will never forget um but I really want to be honest with you guys and share that my OTS experience was not what I thought. I thought I would go there, knock everything out of the park, and just be a stellar. I went there, I knocked physical fitness out of the park, I knocked appearance out of the park, I was good at giving, remembering things when we were told to quote them, um, but the tests I struggled on, I struggled with uh, members in my flight, um, they were awful towards me. Um, and really, to be honest, it tainted the whole picture. And so the reason why I'm sharing this story with you is don't let your experience taint your whole experience of the Air Force. If you guys knew me now, you would know I got hand-selected to be the exec to the group commander. I got countless awards. My um, flight got countless awards. I'm highly rated amongst my peers. I'm stratted. Um, which means basically I'm ranked amongst my peers, which is a good thing for officers. Um, and all of that, you would not have, I could have not foreseen that during my OTS experience. But I was determined once I passed not and graduated not to let, number one, my experience take the real experience of the Air Force. Number two, just because I'm in the Air Force doesn't mean mean every person I meet who's in the Air Force is awesome. There are a lot of sucky people in every job and this is no different. There are sucky people in my flight who I know one day will be working for me. There were people who tried to push my buttons and they succeeded because I was not mentally prepared for that and what you have to do is hold your head up high. Number two, don't try to be top graduate. First of all, you should be networking, making friendships, and that really is what saved me in my experience because I got to network and meet people who I'm still friends with to this day, and they're just awesome. I wish I could go back and be and know what I know now and just be like, and be in the exact same flight with the same people and be like, two months from now, you're not gonna matter, but we can't go back. All we can do is go forward. Um, so I want to prepare you guys with not, it's a positive experience, but because I learned so much and it just made me mentally stronger, but there's so many times where I call my dad almost in tears, like, what did I sign up for? Because these people are just messing with me. And I think he knew that it was going to be hard for me just because, uh, you know, I was the youngest, one of the youngest ones there. Um, and then just overall... You know, sometimes people like to mess with people, um, but I think he wanted me to learn that on my own. <laughs> so I think he first saw the future, but I didn't at that time. And I want to share this story with you guys because I want you guys to know that do not give up. Do not let, even if you're going to basic training, um, which is the enlisted house, and you're watching my video, or you're going to any type of OTS training, do not give up. Do not let negative people win. Don't be nasty back to them. Just be polite and respectful, which is what I did. And now it's like, eh, worked out. Stick to what you know. Study hard. Um, make those friendships so you guys can all have connections. And use your resources. And just have a great time. OTS can be a great experience or a bad experience. Um, it's what you make it. I, when my parents got there to see me graduate, I was so happy. Nothing mattered that went on previously. I didn't let drama sit there and affect me. There was people trying to be catty. I wasn't about that life. 
all I did was sit there and be like, okay, I can get through this. And it was an awesome experience. Some people loved OTS. They had no challenges at all. They just flew through everything. That wasn't the case for me, but everything in my life has been a challenge. And I think God allows those challenges to happen to me because it makes me so much more stronger. Because if I didn't suffer through anything, I wouldn't have learned anything. And my pain wouldn't have had a purpose. But now it has purpose because full circle, I'm kicking butt right now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my good, bad, and ugly kind of story on OTS. Um, if you guys want more military videos, comment down below and let me know what you would like to see. But yeah. Overall, I went and changed the experience for the world. It was so much fun, and would I go back? No, <laughs> I wouldn't. Um, yeah, but life's too short to sit there and dwell on negative things, so I thank God for bringing me through this and that I passed. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to keep on keep it on. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Um, subscribe down below and check out our couple's channel called Ron and Lou. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.